Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly Hank it with the action With the vital speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut Go BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the profit not the re -ups. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Man Just caught a touchdown from the bay while incarcerated, Lloyd wrote the amalgamated Order of Lordism, 61 pages obtained by ABC7 that detailed the Vice Lord command structure in the prisons. The Chicago Street Gang, targeted by a joint investigation of local police and the FBI. More than 100 suspected gang members are arrested on the city's west side. This is an investigation that started about two and a half years ago. And it involves secret wiretaps that were placed on the phones of the gang members. ABC7's Ben Bradley was at the court appearance of many of those suspects and joins us with more details. Ben. Linda Allen, for more than two years as members of this street gang allegedly sold drugs on the west side, FBI agents and Chicago police officers were listening, watching and recording, building a case that they hope will cripple one of Chicago's biggest and Police and prosecutors say that during Lloyd's quarter century as gang leader, vice lord drug deals, extortion and other crimes led to thousands of homicides. What'd you do for Willie? Yeah, I would die for him, kill for him, rob for him, steal for him, go to jail for him too. While incarcerated, Lloyd wrote the amalgamated Order of Lordism, 61 pages obtained by ABC7 that detailed the Vice Lord command structure in the prisons. I like to present this trophy to Willie Lord. The King of Kings, the 2001 Macarena Player Ball. Give it up. Come on down, Willie Lord. Willie Lord. Come on down, Trent. Keep the nigga really trained out. I'm going to try to get a little bit just in the jack. I want to thank uh, Bishop Juan, uh, uh, you, Chief. Chief. Chris Simo, yeah. and, and all the players up here. Yeah. And gangsters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Talk about it, Chief. Uh, this is my first time being able to make one of these uh, balls, but uh, I'm glad to be here. I'm not going to hold it up. Church, 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 and love. Yeah, congratulations. Tonight's special segment, an ABC7 exclusive with Willie Lloyd, a former gang leader who says he was nearly killed for speaking against the kind of life he once led. Lloyd was a longtime leader of the Vice Lords, the oldest and largest street gang on Chicago's west side. ABC7's Charles Thomas joins us with the message Lloyd wants to spread now about life in a gang. Charles? Ron, for most of the past 35 years, the notorious Vice Lords gang was ruled from various prisons by convicted cop killer Willie Lloyd. But Lloyd, who survived an assassination attempt in 2003, is speaking out again against the organized criminals who terrorize Chicago neighborhoods. We visited Lloyd in another state, where he is being treated for his wounds and hiding from those who might still want him dead. Gang life is now. to be glorified. Willie Earl Lloyd, who spent over half his life in state and federal penitentiaries, is now imprisoned by his own body. Lloyd is the 55-year-old, he says retired, supreme chief of the almighty Vice Lord Nation. That's right, the king. The king of kings. Lloyd has been paralyzed from the neck down since August 2003 when he was hit by four bullets fired by assassins in Garfield Park. 
Before the shooting, Lloyd says he quit the Vice Lords and became an outspoken critic of gang life. He believes his attackers included some of his former henchmen. They felt I was threatening to their way of life. But Lloyd would not give an order to retaliate. I don't want to take control again. No. It ain't for Willie to take control no more. Despite a dire prognosis from his doctors, Lloyd and his wife Willa are convinced he will walk again and will return to Chicago to continue his campaign against gangs. There's no benefits in joining a gang. I think myself as Dr. Frank Stan, the monster I created, had turned on me. Lloyd told me he was never replaced as Supreme Chief and that the Vice Lords are now many small gangs operating independent of each other. Ron Cathy, Chicago Police, never arrested anyone for the 2003 assassination attempt. Charles, thanks. At one time during his life, during an interview, Willie Lloyd would infamously say, I was a street taxer. I taxed everybody in the city of Chicago. I taxed pimps, I taxed hustlers, I taxed the gangbangers. You can say extorting. If a guy was making $5,000, then I'm going to get at least $1,000 of that. Hey, what's the business? Shays Popola, salute the almighty mob. Now, this story is going to take place on the west side of Chicago, specifically in the Lawndale neighborhood, but it's going to get way bigger than that. Now, you know we're all about Mount Rushmore's. And I would have to say that the city of Chicago probably has the easiest one, just thinking right offhand, it being Hoover, Barksdale, Fort, and Lloyd. Now, the difference between Willie Lloyd and the other three is he didn't start the gang that he would rise to the top of. But to me, he was clearly the one that was most hands-on. Now, Willie Lloyd would be born in Chicago a little bit after Christmas on December 29th, 1955. Now, I wasn't there, so I can't say exactly. And if you was, definitely feel free to get in the comment box and explain it. But I would picture the 1960s when Willie was coming to age in Chicago would be ripe with poverty, turned up with racism, and just a time in the city where different gangs and factions were just sprouting up every single day. And imagining that to be the climate of the city, it's not surprising that Willie would join a faction of the Vice Lords, the unknown Vice Lords, at the early age of 12. And it would be rumored that by the time he was 14, that he would go on to recruit thousands of other members to the gang. By the time the early 70s would roll around, Willie would already have a propensity for violence and a reputation that would precede itself looking for action outside of the city. By the time December 1971 would roll around, Willie, along with several other fellow unknown vice lords, would begin traveling to Davenport, Iowa, where he was said to have normally visited a fellow member of the gang who had recently moved to the area. While visiting Davenport, the group would begin to commit armed robberies. He was alleged to be part of a group that would rob an establishment by the name of the Little Green Apple Tavern. It was said that they held up the entire business, robbing everyone for jewelry as well as cash. Things would only escalate for the group when, in early December of 1971, they would act on a tip and target a room in downtown Davenport at the Quality Inn Motel where the group was alleged to have plans to rob a Davenport police officer by the name of Leon Washington. The robbery wouldn't go as planned and chaos would ensue. And it would be during that chaos where a rookie officer with the Davenport Police Department by the name of Michael Farnsworth would end up losing his life. Though he wouldn't fire one shot in the incident, 
Willie Lloyd would be sentenced to 25 years in the Iowa prison. Now, if I said Chicago was turned up with racism in the 1960s, I could only imagine how turned up Iowa was in the 1970s. Luckily for Willie, he would only end up serving 15 years of that 25-year sentence. And I guess I don't want to say lucky because lucky would be serving no days. But he would be released on parole right in time for Christmas season in December of 1986. And when Willie Lloyd would return to the West Side, it would be with stature and to a king's welcome, earning a high-ranking spot into the AVLN or the Almighty Vice Lord Nation. By two years from his release from prison in 1988, Willie Lloyd would declare himself the head of the entire Vice Lord Nation. He would assume leadership overseeing all Vice Lord branches. Now, after being involved in the murder of a police officer, no matter where you go, you're going to always be on the radar. And some would say Willie would face revenge for that act during that same year in October of 1988 when he would be beaten up and assaulted by officers from the Minneapolis Police Department. The officers would claim that during that time, Willie Lloyd controlled 150 unknown Vice Lord members in Minneapolis, and they were known for their involvement in crack distribution, as well as robbing other local crack dealers. Willie Lloyd would find himself in another situation with law enforcement the very next year in 1988, when he would be found in the legal possession of a MAC-10, Willie Lloyd would end up serving two and a half years on that gun charge. And this would begin his slip from the top of the almighty Vice Lord Nation as he was said to become addicted to heroin during this time, which would begin to raise concerns about his leadership in the eyes of the nation. Again, released from prison right around the Christmas season on December the 30th, 1992, Willie Lloyd was determined to restore his power within the Vice Lord Nation. But upon his return, disputes over drugs and old money would erupt, and he would allegedly find himself in a violent conflict over the North Avenue drug trade with the Four Corner Hustlers, something that I spoke briefly about with LaBar Bro Man Span. Y'all can go check that out. But just a year after his release in December of 92, he would face more charges of armed robbery and unlawful restraint in 1993. Now, further compounding his challenges during his trial, attempts would be made on his life, including a brazen shootout on the Eisenhower Expressway. Now, it's said that rival factions would engage in a vicious cycle of revenge, kidnappings, and shootings that would plunge the UVL or the unknown Vice Lord faction into an all-out war. Now, by the time 1994 would roll around, law enforcement would close in on the UVL drug operations, resulting in Willie Lloyd's conviction and an eight-year prison sentence. But it was said that during this incarceration, which would be his last, it would mark a turning point in the gangster, as Willie Lloyd would emerge a reformed man stepping down from his position in the Vice Lord leadership and pretty much renouncing gang life totally. After his release from prison in 2002, Willie Lloyd will return to the West Side on a new mission, said to be on a quest to save people from the same gang life he helped recruit people to decades ago earlier. Despite his philanthropic efforts, just a year after being released from prison, Willie Lloyd would be shot and paralyzed in Garfield Park in 2003. Some people would say Willie was still in the streets trying to extort people. Some people would say that it was the gang trying to stop him from stopping people from joining the gang. And some people would just say it was payback for some of the wild shit that Willie had done on the West Side throughout the years. But most people, including Willie himself, believed that the shooting was orchestrated by the same gang that he helped to grow, the Vice Lords. Willie would go into somewhat hiding until his death in 2015. Now, I definitely need y'all in the comment box to let me know what four faces make up the gangsters of the city of Chicago. 
Y'all hit that red bell and subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. Y'all head downstairs, let me know where I need to go to, what I missed, what I got wrong, what I need to cover. Hit me directly, Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. And until the next mission, y'all know the rules. It's Shades Popular. Salute the almighty mob.